Hey guys, welcome to Miss Trini Treats. Today I will be showing you how to make an adorable Moana three-tier cake for your next theme party. Teamed up with delicious sparkly cakes, head over to her channel and check out how to make this wonderful Moana-inspired cake topper with easy-to-follow instructions. So she has a lot of great content on her YouTube channel for all occasions. All right, so let's begin by leveling and stacking our cakes. First, add a little bit of frosting to the center of your cake plate. And then place your first layer on top of the frosting in the center of the cake plate. Taking a bread knife or leveler and just cut straight across your cake, making sure to keep your knife even all the way through. Taking some white icing in a decorating bag, I'm just going to pipe a circle around the outside of the cake and then fill it in with icing. And then I'm going to smooth it out with my spatula. And now place the next cake on top of this, level it, and then cover it with frosting. Do this with all three layers. I'm now cutting my cake sides down with my bread knife using a sawing motion. This is going to smooth the sides down and get it ready for fondant. After I have even the sides out, I am using my decorating bag with white frosting once again and just frosting the sides of my cake. Then I'm going to go back over with a spatula and smooth it all out. And now cover the top with your frosting as well. Place this in the fridge for about 30 minutes to harden. Now we are going to work on the next layer. Following the same steps as before, we're just going to go through and level each of the cakes, frost them, and smooth them out, and then place them in the fridge to chill. While you're waiting, you can start rolling out your fondant. I am covering the top layer with white, the middle layer with blue, and the bottom layer with like a tan color. So I'm just going to show you how to do one of the cakes, and then you can just follow all these steps for your next two layers. I rolled it up over the top of my cake, and then using your hands, just kind of slowly and carefully push out any wrinkles. Do this all the way around until your cake is completely smooth on all sides. Now it's time to cut the base down. I'm using my scissors and I'm just going to cut the excess off the bottom of my cake plate. Now that all my layers are covered in fondant, I'm going to take these bubble tea straws, as one end is pointy, the other is kind of flat, and I'm going to press the flat end into the top of my cake, wiggle it around a little bit, and then pull the straw back out so I can see where my frosting mark is, and cut it at that mark. I'm putting four of these straws in, as this is going to be holding the most of the weight, and then the next layer I'm going to be putting in only three, and, and then you don't add any straws to the top layer. Now we're going to work on the little piggy. I printed this out online, it's just a, um, a picture, you can find them on Google. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the pig and then I'm going to cut off each of his features and use that as my guide on all my fondant pieces. So first we're going to cut off each of the ears. And now we're going to cut out the snout. And now the eyes. This one, make sure when you cut it out, you're cutting out the spot around his eye as well. And then cut the eyeball out of the spot. Now place the cutout face to the side because you're gonna need this after. Now it's time to cut out all of our features. I rolled out some pink fondant and placed my snout template on top of the fondant and then carefully cut around the edges. And then I went back and cut out the two small circles that are going to be the nostrils on the snout. I tried to keep as much as the original snout together so that I could use it later for placement. I rolled out a piece of black fondant and laid the snout over the top of it. And then using my sharp utensil, I'm cutting out the two small holes for the nostrils. Now I'm placing my template back on top of the snout and lining up where the nostrils need to go. And then apply them with water. and then remove your template. With the eyeballs, I did kind of the same thing. I just laid the eyeball in a black fondant and then cut around it. After rolling out some gray fondant, I cut the spot around the eye. Out. Now take your eyeball and cut off any of the black portion around the outside of it. Roll out some white fondant and then cut out the outside part of your eyeballs. And now dry fit them to make sure that they fit inside the black circle. Now take your black once again and use your tip number 12 to punch out two small circles. 
and then place them in the center of the white circle. After applying all those together with water, take your template and place it over the front of your cake. And then using a little bit of water, brush inside just where the snout is, and then apply your snout to that area. This way you're going to be able to line up all your features. And now do this with your two eyes. Moving on to the gray piece of his hair on the front of his head, we are going to take a piece of gray fondant and we're going to trace over it with a toothpick. This will give me an idea of where I need to cut. And now I'm going to take my sharp utensil and just cut out that outline. And then using the flat part of my toothpick, I'm just going to press in little hairs, just kind of, you know, giving it more of an indented look so that when you look at it from afar, it looks like a bunch of little hairs. Kind of like this. Now we're going to bake the eyebrows and I'm going to roll out some black fondant and then I'm going to lay them on top of the piggy's head right where they would be to see how much I would need and then I'm going to go back and apply them with my template and some water. In order to keep all three cakes stacked up and without falling, I'm going to use these three wooden skewers. You can buy dowels, I just didn't have a dowel on hand so I'm just going to use all three of these for stability and press them all the way through. I'm going to have a little bit of a pointed top left over and that's where I'm going to add his hair. I'm going to take some white fondant and then just kind of press in the sides a little bit and then place it right directly on top of his head using some water. And then using a pair of my food safe scissors I'm going to cut out little hairs on the top of his head. And then just using my fingertips I'm just going to separate the hairs a little bit to give it more of a spiky look. Using the back end of my paintbrush, I'm just going to push it into the fondant and blend it into the cake. Now it's time for the ear. I've used the same steps as I did before on making the ear with all the pieces. And what I'm going to do now is I've, I pushed in a toothpick and I've molded it a little bit just so that it will fit, sit snugly against the side of the cake. And then I set it aside to harden just for a little bit. Once it's hardened some, I've added some water to just the bottom part of the ear and then I pressed it into the side of his head, held it in place until I was sure that it would stay. Moving on to Moana's headpiece, I am going to be using some green fondant and some yellow fondant. I'm going to split the green in half. Half of my leaves are going to be a dark green and the other half have got like a yellow stripe to them. So mix them a little bit, not too much, and then wrap it up in some saran wrap and place it aside while I work on my grain. In order to make the leaves, I'm going to cut out a leaf shape. Once the shape has been cut out and I'm happy with it, I'm going to use that as the template for the remainder of all of my leaves. I'm just going to lay it on top of the fondant and cut around it. Now in order for our leaves to stick to Moana's head really well, we're we'll pressing toothpicks into the bottom of each leaf and letting them harden. look a little bit like this. Now do this with the rest of your green. And then using one of your green leaves as a guide, go over your yellow and green mixed fondant and cut around it. You should have quite a few by now. Moving on to the flowers, I just rolled out some pink fondant and I have this cookie cutter that I got from Wilton. It's just a little five uh, petal cookie cutter and I'm just going to press out a bunch of flowers. And then using these little mini cupcake liners, I'm going to use these to hold the flowers so that when my flowers have dried, they have more of a bend to the ends of the petals. They should look like this when they're hardened. Brush some water to the back of each flower and then place it where you'd like it on her head. When you're ready for your leaves, just kind of place them in sideways. You can go up and down. You can do, you put them in any direction you like. Um, some of the leaves, they kind of fall on her face, so I took the toothpick out and just kind of brushed some water to the back of it. 
more to overlap some of these, I, I cut down the ends a little and just brushed some water on and placed it underneath like the flowers and around um, areas that I couldn't fit a large one. And then just go through and do this with all the rest of your petals. Ensure to cover any areas that are exposed. To make her hair, I'm just going to use some black. I'm just going to cut out a wavy shape, kind of like this and brush a little bit of water onto the back of each piece and then place them on her head just slightly overlapping the last piece. This will give her hair more of a layered look. To finish her eyes, I'm just going to use these little white sprinkles and add a little bit of water to the back of each one and then place them just above each side of her pupil. Also I want to note that I used black sprinkles for her eyelashes and just applied those with a little bit of water. Moving on to the second tier, I am using a little bit of food coloring on my already light blue fondant. And what this is going to do is give me different stripes on the fondant so that it looks more the color of the ocean. I can't remember the size of this cookie cutter, but I will leave it in the description. Um, but I'll be using this to cut out all the larger circles for the water. And then using this smaller cookie cutter, I'm just going to press out the center of the circle. I'm going to use the open end of this leaf tip just to give it more of a bubbly look. And then I'm going to apply these to the cake with a little bit of water. And you can add as many or as little as you like. I'm using these six slits as a border along the bottom of each of my layers. I'm going to place a little bit of frosting to the back of each six slit and place it along the base of the top and the bottom of cakes just to hide the seams between the layers. And then again with the white sprinkles, I'm just going to apply them to his eyes with a little bit of water. For the last detail to finish off the cake, I decided I was going to add little white sugar pearls and scatter them all over around the front of the cake to add to the illusion of bubbles. This is a lot of cake that we made. I love how I was able to fit three different themes in. So you can either make one or you can make all of them together. And don't forget to check out my friend Delicious Sparkly Cakes. She has made this wonderful cake topper with easy to follow instructions. Go ahead and check out her channel. She's got a lot of other fun ideas that you can do as well. I will be posting pictures of this on my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages. And if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye also, guys. don't forget. Also, I will be posting pictures of this on my I will be as she has made hips put on the pate. High five. <laughs> nice job. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <sighs> Just put my thumb up again. Um, I was able to get the piggy's ears to stay on. <laughs>